evening and welcome. I am Amarachi Ubani. Tonight, attacks by suspected herdsmen on three communities in Adamawa State leave several people dead, including three policemen. Founder of the Latter Rain Assembly, Pastor Tunde Bakare, calls for replacement of the 36 state structure with the six geopolitical zones. 1,000 days after the abduction of Chibok girls, the Brimbaka Girls Group demands greater action towards securing the release of the remaining girls. And Iran's ex-president Ali Akbar Rafsanjani, a dominant figure in the country's politics since the 1980s, dies at the age of 82. Three communities in Adamawa State have been thrown into mourning following the attack by herdsmen, which has left three policemen dead, one abducted and scores of villagers also dead. At Kamenye village, some of the villagers were seen today burying the dead. No one could tell exactly how many people were killed, but the attack has left in its trail damaged houses and abandoned police vehicles. The indigents are calling on federal and state authorities to provide better security to prevent fresh attacks by suspected herdsmen. The people here are predominantly farmers, but for now they are relying on the help of the authorities to live a normal life and feed their families. The government of Adamawa State is presenting some gifts and relief materials to make life meaningful for them. They have faced a series of attacks by herdsmen. We are trying to build, build peace process. The panel submitted their reports after the crisis. And we've gone through the reports and we're trying to implement part of the report now by cushioning the effect of the clashes and the damages. That's why we are here. We brought uh, 779 bags of rice, 50 kg, and 10 million naira for the Kodomo community to share, at least to cushion the effect of the clashes. Giving further details on the state government's intervention, the Commissioner of Information and Strategy says some herdsmen who lost 47 cattle were given 4.7 million naira to cushion the loss. We took prompt action to pacify the communities that are involved and try to see if we could uh, as a short-term measure, not as a measure that is aimed at a uh, kind of laying a, a very dangerous precedents, but as a short-term measure that would ensure that our communities live peacefully, the government took certain steps to, to compensate uh, those that, you know, uh, the security verified had lost some of their property. But that is uh, just part of the overall peace-building process that we are establishing. Speaking on behalf of the people, the king of the Bata kingdom, who is in company of another king, applauds the government's gesture, promising... Staying with security issues, two soldiers have been confirmed to have sustained injuries in an attack on Buniyadi community by Boko Haram militants in Yobe State. A spokesperson for the 27th Task Force Brigade in Buniyadi. Lieutenant George Okupe said that two military officers have been taken to hospital for treatment. He said though the attack was successfully repelled, soldiers, have, soldiers are searching for the insurgents after recovering one AK-47 rifle. Lieutenant George Okupe further said the army identified traces of blood along the route. The insurgents fled and will continue the search to ensure their arrest.
Meanwhile, the Nigerian military has begun cross-border patrol between Plato and Kaduna states to forestall fresh clashes, especially in southern Kaduna. The commander of the Special Task Force, Major General Rogers Nicholas, gave an assurance to residents in affected communities that normalcy will soon be restored. The Special Task Force, Operation Safe Haven, with the mandate of maintaining law and order in Plateau State and parts of Bochi State, in collaboration with Operation Yaki, of one division of the Nigerian Army are operating a joint cross-border military patrol in the affected areas towards confidence building and to enhance peace within the communities. Troops of one division are already deployed here. We'll cross over into Kaduna State to support one division, primarily to, to uh, synergize with them in terms of strategizing how to make sure that this does not happen again. Top security forces visited various communities that were affected in the aftermath of several attacks in southern Kaduna. The team was at the palace of the Tim Nikyov of Kaninkong Chiefdom in Bakinkogi, as well as the palace of the chief of Godogodo, where appeals were made for adequate security that will ensure that people that fled their communities can return. Our problems are very few and straightforward. We are farmers. We just want to be able to go to our farm safely and come back safely. In addition to the presence of military personnel on ground, arrangements have been concluded for day and night patrol by the military to ensure peace within affected communities. If there's a network of communication where when you see perceived threats, you call the military or the next checkpoint, then you can be able to react, react positively. That's what we're going to do. As peace gradually returns to the affected areas of southern Kaduna communities, it is important that mutual trust is enhanced between security agents and members of the community with adequate cooperation so as to encourage those displaced to return to their homes and continue their lives. More on that attack in Adamawa State. Three communities are thrown into mourning following an attack by herdsmen, which left three policemen dead. A scores of villagers also dead and one person abducted. Coming a village where this attack happened, the villagers were seen today burying the dead. No one, however, could tell exactly how many people were killed, but the attack left in its trail damaged houses and abandoned police vehicles. <laughs> Early 24 hours after the Adamawa state government brokered a peace treaty between the Fulani herdsmen and farmers in Demsa local government area of the state over rumored attack, everyone's worst fears have been confirmed with an attack on three communities of Kwaine, Gidandadi and Karlahi, all in Demsa local government area of Adamawa state. In one of the three communities, Kwaine, the visible sight of smoke indicates the attack occurred hours ago. The people of these communities, who are predominantly farmers and fishermen, carry out their daily activities on the bank of River Benue. According to witnesses, the attack started at about 3 p.m., while most of them were out to their farms, cropping and fishing, leaving behind only their elderly and children. There was this information long before now that people, these people will also attack this village. And the issue is with the security, even long, be, even long before now. We lost three of our gallant mobile policemen, and two of them are missing, and uh, already we've uh, raised a high-powered uh, search team to come the area, and uh, in no distant time, by the special grace of God, we are going to recover our men. The villagers are not allowing the attacks to weigh them down, though, as they have built makeshift shelters. Reacting to the attack, the Adamal State Commissioner of Information and Strategy condemns the incident. The action of the attackers had been very, very, very unfortunate, uh, very callous, very unacceptable and indeed condemnable. For now, everything seems calm, but the affected communities are now faced with lack of food and shelter as those injured are currently receiving medical attention at the hospitals in Yola. 
a fifth operational command has been established by the Nigerian Air Force to address the challenges of insecurity in the country. The Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, says the operational base, which will serve as the Special Operations Unit, the commander also has a quick response group located in Zamfara, Imo and Oshun states. Our correspondent Amaka Okafo reports. The Special Task Force, Operation Safe Haven, with the mandate of maintaining law and order in Plateau State and parts of Bauchi State in collaboration with Operation Yaki of one division of the Nigerian Army are operating a joint cross-border military patrol in the affected areas towards confidence building and to enhance peace within the communities. Troops of one division are already deployed here. We we'll cross over into Kaduna State to support one division, primarily to, to uh, synergize with them in terms of strategizing how to make sure that this does not happen again. Top security forces visited various communities that were affected in the aftermath of several attacks in southern Kaduna. The team was at the palace of the Tim Nikiob of Kaninkong Chiefdom in Baikinkogi, as well as the palace of the chief of Godogodo, where appeals were made for adequate security that will ensure that people that fled their communities can return. Our problems are very few and straightforward. We are farmers. We just want to be able to go to our farm safely and come back safely. In addition to the presence of military personnel on ground, arrangements have been concluded for day and night patrol by the military to ensure peace within affected communities. If there's a network of communication where when you see a see threat, you call the military or the next checkpoint, then you can be able to react, react positively. That's what we're going to do. As peace gradually returns to the affected areas of southern Kaduna communities, it is important that mutual trust is enhanced between security agents and members of the community with adequate cooperation so as to encourage those displaced to return to their homes and continue their lives. The senior pastor of the Lateran Assembly, Mr. Tunde Bakare, has asked the federal government to strengthen its strategies in the fight against corruption. Pastor Bakare, who gave his State of the Nation address today in Lagos, advocates a reduction in the number of states from 36 to 6 geopolitical zones. It was not the usual Sunday service at Lateran Assembly, but the State of the Nation address by the senior pastor, Tunde Bakari. The church was filled to capacity with members and visitors. He began by reviewing his 2016 forecasts, which he reminded the church came to pass, and then began his 2017 forecast, anticipating a better year. Years from now, generations yet unborn will point to this year as a turning point for the Nigerian nation. He also says the president is on course in his anti-corruption fight, but would like to see a more reinvigorated fight from the presidency. We have seen some progress in the anti-corruption war, with the relevant agencies recently extending the fight to elements within the judiciary suspected to have been major impediments to the successful prosecution of the war. Another area he touched on is the need to reduce the state of the federation to six geopolitical zones, a move he believes will make the state healthier and more financially robust. These 36 days, overwhelmingly sustained by locations from Abuja, cannot guarantee functional infrastructure, such as world-class roads, cannot guarantee railways, airports, housing, and urban development. He then ends his speech, calling for support for the president, as he believes in his capacity to do the right things in the interest of the country, but he wants to see an immediate action on the part of the president in reviewing appointments at the federal level. In part two after the break, President Mahmoud Buhari assures that his government is committed to the release of the remaining Chibok girls. Please join us again.